Okay, here we go. I'm going to be using um, contrasting colors. I've got an orange, bronze, gold, and a bit of black, and I've got white. What I'm going to do is, this is isopropyl alcohol. It doesn't really say on the bottle how I mean, how what the percentage of um, alcohol in this, but I was told it's 90% or 91% or something like that. So I do use just a few squirts of alcohol in um, each cup, but and for this one, I'm going to try something different. And I know it's going to create something completely different. So what I'm doing is these, there's only about a third of a cup in each. So I'm going to put a whole, or maybe this is a real big teaspoon. So I'm putting almost a teaspoon in there. And this one can have a full teaspoon because it's half halfway up. Um, I don't really measure anything. Just going to pop this back in the bottle so it doesn't evaporate, and then I won't have any use from it. Um, um, yeah, like I said, I don't really measure anything. I go by eye, and uh, whoo, that alcohol, mamma mia. Okay, so I'm just quickly stirring that in. <coughs> Excuse me. And go high, high on the fumes. Alrighty, so that's quickly mixed in. So I'm going to use the same cup. This is a cup that I use for my resin. It's hard. There's nothing coming off it, so you can use um, reuse your cups. I want to start with the orange, and I want quite a bit of orange because, darn it, I want to do an orange painting. Bit of gold in there. Don't need a lot of paint for such a small canvas. I'm going to put some white in there, maybe on the side. But white is quite dense, so it falls straight through because it's heavy. Oh, things are happening. And a bit of black on the side as well. I'm not going to stir it. I'm going to flip. Flippity. Dippity. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens, guys. Oh, wow, wow, wow. It's definitely orange. Definitely orange. And all the gold is at the bottom. And, yep, things happening. Things are happening. I'll come up a little bit closer so you can see. A little bit better. Well, but I'm, I'm leaking, so I've got to really like that bit there. Oh, so like I said in the previous um, videos, be patient. Don't rush to to flip and help the paint along because it needs to. See, I didn't wet the paint. What I usually do, wet it either with water or with some um, some other paint. So you've got to help it move. And this is quite thin because of all the alcohol. Okay. Um, and so far, I don't have that muddy muddiness that you get with um, with mixing the orange with black so it's not bad okay come on down you go stretching these cells here because I quite like them I'm just going to pull it up a bit just to tidy that bit up a bit and around now we're going to go this way once again, I'm just adding some more paint there. And with alcohol, as it evaporates, it will continue to create things. So, 
nice and so. I like it going over the edges. I think that um, the edges are part of the painting as well. So, but not the back. I heard someone on YouTube say they never um, tidy up the back of the painting because it's all part of art. And uh, frankly, I. I think it's messy and art is at the front of the painting otherwise we'd be hanging the painting from the front back you know so back is not art the back it needs to be tidy so when the customers get your your artwork you you can be proud of presenting a really nice painting with a nice tidy back so they can hang it on their walls and not worry about getting paint you know um, paint stains or paint you know scratching onto the, the wall and it's just more professional and presentable alrighty so I, the, the trick with um, pouring over another painting is not to have it too thick up the top because it takes longer for it to um, to dry and it will the moisture will uh, loosen the bottom painting up so it'll wet the bottom painting which will make it bubble up off the canvas and then you'll, you'll get all the bubbles and cracks in your paint so hopefully this is not too thick and we'll see what happens with this one can you see this? I really like things like that. See a little, it just uh, stands out. So I can torch it and see what happens. I've got a little blob there. I should have listened to my friend Laura when she said mix the um, uh, mix the flow tool really well, which I haven't done. I need to get my little tool. I'll try and pull it out without mucking it up. No. I'm just going to pull this straight out. There we go. It's out. Right, so, torch, torch, torch. A bit of gold coming up now. Now, I'm torching because I'd like to release these bubbles that are stuck underneath and also create some character because as they pop, you can see these tiny little um, circles pop up, which is like cells. Well, they are cells, but... So, okay, that's interesting. So now I can stretch that even more starting to gain character and it has muddied up a little bit if you can see that bit there how interesting that is so I'm going to just try and stretch very slowly around this way. Really like this bit here. So I do have a little bit of orange in there. I think I'm going to do a, a an orange painting with just orange. Just do a um, orange flip cup. That's it. Maybe put a bit of white in it. Okay, it's, it has a lot of character, and that's what I love about painting. Character, movement, you want to look at it and feel something. And it's very shimmering from it. I definitely like that better 
than my previous one but we shall see what it looks like when it dries up I like it I love things like that I love art like that it's got a lot of character and movement I think I already just said that I'm sorry for repeating myself <laughs> When I'm painting, I'm in a really strange, slow mode. Okay, that's that. Please, please dry nicely. Be kind to me. And um, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later.